In this next video, we'll look at an ensembling method called uh, random forests. Uh, it's one ensembling method that's used specifically with decision trees, where you grow a whole bunch of different decision trees or regression trees and combines them into, um, into a single model. In the previous video, we looked at bagging, which is basically a way where you can average the predictions from multiple um, models, each model trained on a different um, what we call bootstrap sample from your training data. So you take your training data, you've got the design matrix and its target vector y, and you sample with replacement, you sample different training sets. On each training set you fit a model, and then what we do is we average the model. So the idea of bagging can be applied as is to decision trees where each of the models from F1 to FB will then be uh, a decision tree. And random forests um, does that. So you start by doing bagging, but then you also do uh, a few more special things specifically tailored to decision trees. So what we do is every time we consider a split, remember in the decision and regression tree algorithms, we step through and we consider all the different features. And for each feature, we consider all the different split positions. But with random forests, we do something a little bit special. Every time we consider a split, you only consider a subset of the input features. Okay, so what does that mean? Normally when we're growing a decision tree, right, we've got some input, um, x, okay, and that input might be d-dimensional, okay. So that means if we're at a specific node, okay, and we're considering how should this leaf node be split into two new nodes, then what we will do is we will first consider x1, Okay, we will consider all the possible split positions for x1, then we will consider x2, consider all the um, possible split positions for the second feature, and so on, up to the last feature xd. Okay, and that's normally what we would do when we're growing a decision tree or a regression tree. But now what we do is, every time we're in this um, step where we need to decide how to split uh, a leaf node, Instead of considering all the features, all D features, we will only consider a subset of them. So I will randomly pick M features, okay, and M will be less than D, and I will only consider splitting those M features. So I could decide, listen, I'm not going to look at X2 and I'm not going to look at XD, okay? I'll only look at m other features in my list of features. And then when I decide whether I should, how I should split here, I'm only considering those features, okay? And um, very often, uh, a good choice for m is the, the square root of d, okay? And then right at the end, what I do to get the prediction from my model is I combine all the different trees. So if we have a regression setting, then the final output of my model um, will be the sum from the B trees, exactly like we do with bagging. Okay, so let's just step through that, that whole idea again. We decide we're going to grow a certain number of trees, capital B. Then what we do is we first grab a bootstrap sample. In other words, we do the idea from bagging, we generate a data set. And on that data set, we will grow one of the trees. Okay. Then within the tree growing algorithm, every time we consider a split, instead of considering all my D features, all of them, I only consider a subset of M random features. So I select from my list of D features, I only I select a subset of M of them, and I only consider them when I'm splitting this node. Okay, I grow this tree, and every time I get to a leaf node, and I need to consider whether I, uh, how I should split that leaf node, I, I um, select a new set of M random features, and I only pick the best decision from those M. And I do that for each of the B trees that I grow. So the second tree, I will again 
grab a different bootstrap sample and I will grow that tree each time when I need to make a decision about a specific node, I only consider M of um, the D possible features. So this is the equation we would use for a regression tree. For um, a decision tree where we want to make classification decisions, we can do a majority voting as well. Basically looking at, um, for a specific input, um, which class is predicted as the output by most of my B trees. You can also be a little bit more fancy and um, basically take a weighted majority voting where you weigh each vote by the purity of the leaf node. So you would weigh each vote by P, M, K, uh, where K is the classification output. Let's look at an example where we compare a random forest to a straightforward decision tree. So this is the iris data that we've looked at before. Here we've got two features, the sepal length and the sepal width. If we apply a normal decision tree to this data, then we get output looking like this. So these are the decision boundaries. You can see that we've separated out setosas from versicolors from virginicas into these regions. This tree was specifically grown until we get four leaf nodes. Um, we've got one leaf node corresponding to this region here. We've got another leaf node corresponding to this region here, another leaf node corresponding to this region, and then a fourth leaf node corresponding to that region. Let's look what happens when we grow a random forest on this data set. And each of the trees in the random forest will also be limited that they can only have four leaf nodes. And each time we need to make a decision of how to split, we will randomly decide whether to split the sepal width or the sepal length and the other feature will be disregarded. So the result looks like this, and you can clearly see that the decision boundary from these 30 trees, when you combine the predictions with the weighted majority voting, is way more uh, complicated than the decision boundaries with, uh, with just uh, a single um, decision tree.